the more I get subjected to the things I'm getting hit with, you know, the ad hominems and this false fact checking by hoodie people, you know, young men in hoodies and et cetera. Um, I'm, it's hard for me not to get a little radicalized and, and uh, a lot more sympathetic. I, I'm personally, I become very aware of how tenuous our our ability to exercise these fundamental rights that I always assumed was bedrock and in in my profession to have faith in uh, professional societies and publications when you know you see demonstrably false information coming out of the CDC in terms of the adolescent cardiotoxicity risks and the assessment of that. And every major medical association in the United States is in lockstep right behind them. Uh, that's, you know, you ought to have some dissent there. None. Hmm. That, so this journalist that I was referring to that is uh, down in Atlanta, you know, former CNN person, uh, is the one saying that I should stop using the term regulatory capture and call it regulatory corruption, that what we've really got here is the, the um, we're seeing it play out on the world stage, this insidious corruption that we've allowed to happen. Uh, the, the Atlantic article on the FDA that just came out uh, and, and how the uh, reliability and and integrity of the FDA has deteriorated over the last couple of decades. I'm I'm to the point where I don't know um, what what we can rely on anymore and what we can't. I don't. There's no. There doesn't seem to be any arbiter of truth that is uh, committed to scientific integrity um, and uh, transparency. Uh, and it's it's like a free for all, a free fall. I I don't know where the bottom is. Where where how far how far are we willing to fall? How how I'm sorry. How corrupt are we willing to be? How far are we willing to stray from uh, evidence based medicine? Uh, in 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 honesty to the public. And I and I and I. You know, yeah, I'm worried about the new data coming out about Delta and uh, infectivity and in previously vaccinated individuals, but I'm way more worried about what does all this mean going forward for the rest of my life and for my children's lives. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we have covered a lot, Dr. Malone. <laughs> I really appreciate your time. Um, is there anything else that we missed that you wanted to say? So the, I, I thank you for that open-ended question. And I was asked this by a, uh, a journalist in Stockholm uh, a couple of days ago. And her podcast was just being posted. Uh, I don't think that it's helpful for us to fight with each other. I, I really think that if we can... Uh, drop the rhetoric a bit uh, and and try not to go into our foxholes, which is easy to do. And we do it again and again. And a case can be made that the media likes to put us in the foxholes. They love this us versus them, Close, pro-science, anti-science, pro-vax. I'm now being labeled as an anti-vaxxer. I find this amazing. You know, 30 years in of spending my career developing vaccines and I'm an anti-vaxxer. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, um, so we have a tendency to go into our foxholes and the media drives us there uh, because they love a, a fight. And, and I think somehow we need to not give it to them. Mm -hmm. We need to come together somehow. And, and if there's a silver lining here, it's, I think, embodied by this comment that Glenn Beck stated at the end of our third Success, you know, consecutive interview, which is um, 
I'm told, unprecedented. And he said, you know, Robert, I've really enjoyed this time with you uh, in talking, and particularly because you haven't brought politics into it at all. If if we can as a com if we could use this space, this topic area as a community of Americans to be a starting point to say, hey, what really makes us Americans? What is it that we really want? Uh, do we still believe in in these things of freedom of speech and personal rights? Or, or are we good to go with a, uh, a Chinese model because it'll give us more goodies? Uh, is, is that where we're willing to go? For me, I'd rather live more simply and uh, you know, close to the ground and, and uh, have less goodies and be able to speak my mind and think my own thoughts. That's, that's, and if, is that a conservative ideal? Is that a, fundamentally, if you go back in history, that is fundamentally a liberal idea. They, I usually have as my background for standard Skype, uh, maybe this is no longer politically correct, uh, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello is, is just down the road from here. And I have a high level view of Monticello, but the original idea, the Jeffersonian idea was of citizen politicians that um, you know, were a little more in touch with the land and with the people and not these long-term professional uh, DC denizens that we have. And, you know, K Street is often thrown around as the embodiment of the worst of the worst. So that's, that's my, my parting uh, thought is if, if we can, it, I think it, the way out of the woods is we need to try to be nice to each other listen to each other this is like you know rodney king can't we all get along um, <laughs> right? and i feel like i'm channeling that uh but but this is not a time for division this is a time yeah. to come together and focus on how do we how do we protect ourselves and our particularly our children right uh awesome. and that's that's where i'm at is is okay whatever you know if if the whole Congress is bought, paid for by Pfizer. Can't we at least agree that we got to be really careful about what we do with our kids? Yes. And about people of reproductive age. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is a great way to end it. I love those thoughts and I am completely on the same page as far as that goes. Well, thank you, Dr. Malone. I really appreciate your time and I'll keep you updated on what I do with this. I imagine I'm going to have to cut it up a bit because it is a bit long, but I'll let you know what I do with it. And I so appreciate your time. Thank you so much.